I, Star Trek Prodigy is probably one of the new series coming out that I am really looking forward to. Um, just everything from the animation to the fact that it's a show tailored towards kids, uh, I find really kind of fascinating. Uh, in making this show, what like what were you guys looking to uh, to get out of it, either personally or for the audience watching? I think, I mean, outside of kids, you know, kids today are pretty smart, and we don't want to ever undersell them. And, I, and we, and so we kind of looked at it from the view of someone who may not be familiar with Trek. And so really that's like eight years old, 18, 88. There's a lot of people out there who want to get into Trek, but they don't know how to get into it. We always thought this would be a great entry point show for that. And also, like, the universe that we're doing, it's the Trek universe. It's the adult Trek universe just with kids in it. And they're thrust into it, and they have to survive it and do the right thing, and they learn all the beautiful virtues and things that we've all discovered through Trek. I think another thing too, it's like, even though they're kids, we don't pull any punches. We don't treat them like kids. They got to deal with adult problems. I love how he's shaking his head. He's like, yeah. that's exactly how yeah, to do they it. They fail all the time, but they're failing forward, right? Just like all of us are. So, so uh, one, of, one of the things I'm also excited about is uh, obviously cameos. Uh, we, we, we've been starting to get them in Lower Decks. Uh, we, I know uh, Billy Campbell uh, let slip that, that he was going to be making an appearance. Um, is there anyone else that you guys are able to hint that we could at? slip? I wish. <laughs> I wish we could. I wish we could. There's, if you only knew what was inside these tiny brains, there's, there's a lot of really, really cool things. It's a, it's, they're going to go on a long journey, and we don't want to spoil the little mile markers. Like they're come across. Yeah, they're discovering Trek. How are you going to discover Trek without? characters of Trek or exactly. alien species of Trek or entities, you know, of Trek. So. All right. well, maybe a question that you can answer. Uh, we, we know, or I think we know, that the, uh, the ship that they find is in the Delta Quadrant. Yes. Uh, so Janeway, as the, uh, the emergency training hologram, uh, has been on the ship. So obviously she was involved with it somehow. Uh, so is it safe to assume that, the, that in the world of Star Trek now, when Prodigy takes place, uh, we're able to travel pretty seamlessly between the Delta Quadrant and the Alpha Beta Quadrants? I mean, good question, good tricky question. I mean, it took it took her quite a long time to go from the Delta Quadrant to the Alpha Quadrant before, and I wouldn't say they can go that fast, uh, but I will tell you that the Protostar does have some kick to it. And <laughs> that's a good way of saying it, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe that's for the kids. We want to skip a couple pages and get to the good parts. Kids like a fast car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So, also, this is the 55th anniversary of Star Trek. It's been a cultural staple since it really since it premiered. Um, where has Trek come to you guys in, in your lives? Like, obviously, you're working on Star Trek now, uh, which is amazing. But how has your ha, has your personal journey at all been affected by Star Trek when you were younger? Yeah, we grew up on. Wrath of Khan was a really big influence for us. It really um, that was our entry point, right? So we didn't. CTOS, we just jumped right into Wrath of Khan. And honestly, like, I, we can honestly point to that SETI eel moment where that thing goes in uh, Chekhov's ear, where we were like, this is outer space? Like, what? Oh my gosh! And, and it was so different from Star Wars that it really kind of got us thinking even after the movie, and it's kept yeah. us thinking. Spock dying at the end, I mean, they went for huge dramatic emotional swings, you know, where sometimes some Trek episodes don't do that, it's a little more cerebral and less heart. But our entry point in was that cerebral plus that heart. And we loved that. That's why we fell in love with Trek. And so I think when you start watching the episodes of Prodigy, you'll start to see that. That along with the brains, there's a lot of heart. That was great. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.